Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at this Halley Multi-R 80S telescope. It's an 80 millimeter F550, um, 550 millimeters focal length. Doesn't look quite right for this thing. Uh, and it's not. This, well, if this were a Newtonian, this would be way wrong. It's a Jones Bird telescope, or some people call them Bird Jones telescopes. Anyway, a Jones Bird telescope has a uh, much more compact kind of a package. It's got a spherical mirror and it's got a corrector lens in the focuser. So it's not technically a Newtonian. Uh, it's a catadioptric telescope and there are many issues with this kind of telescope. We'll talk about that in more detail. Complicated name. Uh, this telescope is a Jones Bird. This telescope is also a Jones Bird, but do, don't confuse these two. This one is a Jason, very inexpensive department store type telescope, strictly made to be sold to the masses uh, with no consideration for uh, the optical performance of the telescope. Um, these telescopes cannot be adjusted, so you can't even by hook or by crook or with all the techniques in the world make one of these work properly, at least most of them. Some of them accidentally in the factory are made properly, but mostly not. This one, on the other hand, is adjustable. I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, Jones Bird Telescope is a very complicated little piece of optics. It's got a, a primary mirror that's a sphere. It's got a a secondary mirror and then it's got a little corrector lens in the focuser. The fact that it's in the focuser makes everything a bit trickier. I've had Jones Bird telescopes where the um, corrector was in front of the secondary and it works much better. Uh, these things are a real pain to uh, comic, to adjust. Certainly not for the beginner. You don't. These are sold to beginners who have no clue what they're looking at, and you don't want one of these. These are strictly desktop ornaments for you, for your uh, office. These are real functional telescopes, but they're non-trivial. Uh, to make one of these work is a very complicated process. Let me explain. If you're going to attempt to collimate a Jones Bird telescope, you're going to need a set of tools. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, there are only a few sets, a few of these tools here will be necessary. Uh, I've got a screwdriver, absolutely imperative, because this has got Phillips head screws. This is a uh, Cheshire eyepiece from Takahashi, probably costs more than the telescope, and an extension tube, those are helpful. Uh, in if you get desperate, this tool will come in handy too, because you might want to just start from scratch. Here's the process that worked for me. I use the extension tube, like so. That, try, uh, it, that helps to keep your eye lined up, kind of, with everything. You can use this too, but this tends to make things so dark. That Cheshire eyepiece makes so, things so dark. It's actually pretty good for making sure your eye is centered but uh, it may be too dark for you to be able to see anything. Um, of course, you can use a flashlight. Anyway, this is what I did. I, I used this, tried to center it up as best I could. Indoors, I tried to adjust the, first of all, adjust the secondary until you get everything as, as centered as you possibly can, and then adjust the primary uh, and do the push-pull. Typical, kind of a tedious adjustment process. However, you're not done. Once you get it lined up indoors, it may or may not look good when you put it on a, an object, like uh, when I was trying to collimate the other night. So, then what you do is you put an eyepiece in it, like a typical low power eyepiece, 20 millimeter or something. Look at the star. Use your adjustment bolts to slightly, ever so slightly tweak the secondary and then Recenter the star because now you've knocked the set, knocked the star off. So you got to recenter the star. Okay, find the star again, recenter it, maybe adjust 
the prime maybe adjust the secondary a little bit more um try it by by trial and error you have to adjust one then the other one then the other back and forth i had to do it about three or four times before i was finally able to get uh any kind of a decent view through the thing uh, it was tricky it was a it was a headache this is not something you'd want to wish on a typical beginner or even an experience you wouldn't want to wish this on anybody it's a, it's a nightmare at this point you might want to just pull out the sledgehammer here are the accessories that come with this scope it's got an image erecting prism for some reason it's really not very useful with this scope it's got the uh, to be avoided sunglass, uh, which gives you some clue as to the date on this telescope. It's got an extension tube here, which is actually very handy for adjusting the scope. And it comes with a pretty nice Kellner 20 millimeter and a very nice ortho 7 millimeter Vixen eyepiece. That eyepiece might be worth the cost of the telescope, depending on how inexpensively you buy it. The finder for this telescope is, frankly, uh, kind of a joke. Uh, it's a tiny little thing, a 5 by 23, something like that. It's very tiny, very, barely useful finder. The focus for the finder is like that. It's a slide thing. And I'll tell you from experience, having used the thing, it won't stay. <laughs> it doesn't stay where you want it to be. So uh, the finder is problematic. That's not the only problem with this telescope. The mount for this telescope is kind of cute. Oh, I have always liked these. It's a nice little tabletop mount uh, with a built-in counterweight. The counterweight doesn't really completely offset the weight of the scope. As you can see, it's kind of drifting a little bit. There's a friction clutch back here, uh, and there's a friction clutch there. So you can adjust the friction a little bit. It's actually a fairly effective little mount. However, if you want to make this more effective, you buy one of these. This is, well, this was, it was possible to buy these as options back in the day. Uh, this scope happened to have one of these in the box. So, and it's very nice. It very, makes the uh, telescope much more usable. Let me show you how that works. Now you have the scope on a fairly nice mount. You've got it set up on a nice Altaz mount, like so. You can kind of tighten it down. And then when you find your target, you can use these controls. These are very nice, actually. I've used these. Uh, and you can also, of course, mount this on a tripod, which is probably a more efficient way to do things. Mount this on a tripod, and you have a nice slow motion in both directions really makes this into a much nicer uh, usable type mount. Let's have a close-up look at this scope. Notice that it's got three adjustment screws up there on the secondary. And it's got three sets of push-pull bolts on the back for adjusting the primary mirror. You can loosen this and rotate it whatever way you want to go. This is the way the mount works for the scope. The legs are stored inside here. Clever little way of doing things. Take them out. This is the storage case for the box. Uh, there's a handy little envelope back here. And Keep the instructions stored inside. This is the way this opens up. This 
accessories are in this box right here, eyepieces and so forth. You may want to watch uh, my video about the companion to this telescope, or at least one of the companions. Uh, this is the Vixen Halley 70S, I think it is, um, and it's a very interesting telescope, got some really wonderful features. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed having a look at this Halley Multi-R80S telescope made by Vixen. Thank you very much for watching.